I'm not the hospitality expert. Uh, that's why I brought John Hunter. Uh, but I, I'll tell you a little bit about about our company and kind of how I got into the hospitality business. It's kind of a, an interesting story. Uh, a few of the plans that I made for myself have, uh, have you know, kind of played out. Uh, it's always been different and it's really been better than I would have planned for myself. It's been, um, it's been amazing. Uh, you might find it interesting, I was, I was actually, and still are, uh, in the oil and gas business. I grew up in Corpus and went back, after I went to SMU Law School, I went back and worked with my dad. And it was the early 1980s, and some of you, I, I know Charles was here, were, were in the energy business back then. In the early 80s, the energy business was booming. And uh, we were a small company. I was the sixth employee. And uh, we would always take our, we didn't have enough money. We were a small company. We didn't have enough money to drill our own wells. So we'd go out and we'd find an Exxon or Mobil, and, and they'd all pay a third of the cost for a 25% interest. So we would get a 25% carried interest, basically. Well, in 1983, the energy business collapsed. Uh, we went from running 4,000 rigs to 1,000 rigs in about six months. And our little company, was we, we had gone out and bought leases, places to drill, and so we'd already sunk money into these leases. But we didn't have the money to really to drill them ourselves. We always counted on somebody else to do that. So I went out, we had one prospect that was in South Texas in Hidalgo County, close to McAllen, and we just loved this prospect. And I showed that prospect, my dad was a geologist, and I bet I showed that prospect 30 times, and we could not get anybody to buy it. So finally we said, you know, we can't let these leases expire. We've already spent a lot of money on them, and we're gonna drill it ourselves, which we Basically, we had maybe enough money to cover the cost if everything went okay, but we didn't want to let the leases expire. So keep in mind, instead of having 25%, if we had been able to sell it like we wanted to, we drilled it and we had 100%. And the well came in, and we drilled 17 wells in that field. And in the early, in the kind of middle 80s when things were terrible in the business, we had this field that was producing massive amounts of oil and gas. And we took that money and we built the company up and we started drilling and drilling and drilling and by 1989, we were a big independent. And, and in, our, in all of our knowledge, we thought, well, let's go buy somebody else because we're a big company. You know, we have cash, we have cash flow. And keep in mind, what happened on the, the well wasn't what we had intended. We had intended to sell it, but we drilled it ourselves. So we got, we start trying to buy a company. And we looked and looked and looked and every time we bid, you know, $100 on a company, somebody else bid 200 And finally, I went into my father, and I said, you know, I said, people are paying crazy prices for oil and gas assets. This was 1989. I said, we ought to, we ought to sell our production. And my dad, is a, being a geologist, geologists, you know, you know, oil and gas, when they find something, it's like their baby. They don't really want to turn, turn loose of it. And, uh, but I finally talked him into it, and we put our, uh, our oil and gas on the market thinking we would get maybe 300 million and Texaco walks in and pays us 500 million dollars in 1989. So I tell you that story just because all the things that I that I'd planned like okay we're going to buy a company but then we sell a company we're going to sell this deal but we end up drilling it ourselves you know they weren't really within the, plan, the plans that I had going in. So we turned around and started buying hotel assets in 1990 with the proceeds from the sale and that's how we got in the hospitality business. Um, we purchased Omni in 1996 for about a half a billion dollars. Uh, since that time, uh, we've probably invested two and a half billion in the business. Uh, it's a big company. We'll do almost two billion in revenue this year. Uh, and we have incredible people. And I, you know, we, along the way we bought Gold's Gym and, you know, I tell people that you, you're growing a culture growing a culture of service, I, I'm not sure exactly, I mean, it doesn't just happen and no matter how, how hard you try, you know, we're still trying to get that culture, for example, in Golds that we have in Omni. Omni Hotels has won the J.D. Powers Service Award for get, uh, best service in the upper upscale brands for the last 10 years. This year we finished second uh, behind a, a relatively new new entrance, was it uh, Kempton. the Kemp Kempton. Uh, by, beat us by a, a hair, but, but out of you know 15 or 17 companies, we've been first or second, I think, every year in the last 10 years, and have won it four times. Um, now, one of the we don't teach this. I mean, uh, like we don't the the principles that drive us are are scriptural. 
uh, Jim Caldwell and I, he's kind of my, you know, we get together and pray every Monday morning. And, you know, when you have a big company, I think we have 20,000 employees at Omni now, you, you know, you, and we don't, we don't wear our faith on our sleeves, but, the, but it's like uh, Ken Blanchard. Some of you may know Ken Blanchard. He wrote The One Minute Manager. And he's got an organization called, he's got a, called, called Lead Like Jesus now. And he says, he says, Bob, he says, I'll tell, talk to anybody about Jesus. He says, I don't care if they're Christians or not. He says, because Jesus was the greatest leader that's ever been. And his principles are true no matter what business you're in. And that's what we found. So this, these are the kinds of things, for example, that, uh, that, that drive our business and drive our culture. Okay, for example, humility. Uh, Matthew 23, 12 says, those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. That's a great leadership principle. That's a great hospitality principle. Okay, how about on, serv uh, on servant leadership? You know, we feel like uh, as leaders of the company, we, we are servant leaders. And we follow Matthew 20, 28, it says, even the son of man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. So those are the kinds of principles that drive uh, what we try to do as a business. So you say, well, okay, that, that sounds good. How do you, how, do, how does that relate to how you deal with your associates, how, uh, the culture that's in your company? Well, well what's that, what that's led to is, is uh, the thing that I, that I concentrate most on a lot, of, we, we, call it, <laughs> we call it the Omni Trilogy. So the, the Omni Trilogy is three things, and, and it's, a, it's, it's a circle with, with nobody on top, and it involves the customer and the associate and ownership, which is basically my family and I, okay? And the idea is this, none of those are more important than the other. None takes preference over the other. They're all equally important. And my interest as the owner, my financial interests, are no more important than John Hunter's interest as an associate, or a bellman, or uh, a houseman, or uh, anybody else in that hotel, a banquet server, it doesn't matter. They're all, we're all in this circle together. We have equal value. And, and, and these, this is really, this is what Christ taught. You know, this is a principle that he taught. And so how does he say, well, how does that come out? Well, you, you may have seen this little power of one. And uh, one of the things he talks about, what do, what do we want the customer to have? What do we want, to, we want to exceed their expectations? And you know, we've done a really good job. When we bought Omni in 1996, I bet I got a dozen letters a month complaining about our service. I bet I, I don't get a dozen letters uh, in three years now. In fact, I get letter after letter after letter saying, how, how do you train your people? I had the best experience. Somebody that went out of the way they did something for me that was unbelievable. And I get story after story after story. Do we mess up? Do we have service failures? Of course we do. You know, it's, it's impossible. I and mean, we've got 20,000 people we're trying to train in this. And, you know, we, we get jammed. We have people checking in fast. We, don't, we didn't expect them. And the, you know, valet service backs up. That kind of stuff happens. But by and large, we have really, thanks to people like John Hunter, uh, and we train, 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 because we want to exceed our customers' expectations. Okay, what about the associate? Well, for me, the trilogy means the associate has equal value with our customer and myself, and we're going to treat them special. So for us, that means we go and, we, you know, if you work a shift at one of our hotels, you get, you get a meal. We want the employee cafeterias to be spotless. We want the food quality in the employee cafeterias to be the same food quality that we're serving to our customers. And I tell our general managers, because I can't know all of the employees anymore. I used to know every one of our executive team members. I, it's impossible now. But I tell our general managers, and I still do interview and talk to the general managers of each hotel, I say, look, you know, most of the people that work for us are going home to situations that are not that happy. I mean, they're never going to make a ton of money. I mean, we have talking about people who are cleaning the rooms and bell captains. and You know, they're, not gonna, they're never going to have excess cash. They're never going to be rich. Uh, and they're going home, a lot of them, to, you know, husbands who are in jail or kids who are on drugs or, you know, a lot of problems. It's a tough, it's tough. And I say, this is, this is your job as a general manager. You make that eight hours, they're working at an Omni Hotel, the best eight hours of their day. And that's our goal. You make that the best eight hours of our day. And we, and we try to treat our people. Now, do we always do it? No, of course we don't. We have employees who are unhappy and grumbling, but, but that's our mantra. That is our goal, is to make, you know, to, to value them as people, not work product, but as people. Uh, and then the last is the owner. That's me, and I feel like I get a good, should get an even shake as well, and I do. 
But you know what it meant for me was like, like when the downturn came in 2008, 2009, the hotel business really dropped. I mean, rapidly. Occupancies, rates, everything dropped rapidly. And you know, uh, I said, we're gonna keep spending money. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing fine. We're gonna keep spending money on our hotels. We're gonna keep buying new carpet, new beds, new drapes. We're gonna keep, uh, and, and we're one of the few companies that during that downturn <laughs> kept investing in our real estate. We own most of our hotels, which is a great thing because we don't, uh, if you're Marriott, for example, Marriott manages, they don't own any real estate. They don't want to own any real estate. They manage and they get a good fee and it's a great model because you don't, you don't have to put up any capital. Whereas we're putting up a lot of capital. I mean, you know, like Nashville, for example, we opened Nashville in October. It was $275 million to build one hotel. So, but we keep investing, we kept investing in our product uh, and, I've, and I've had a great return. It's been, I've, I've loved owning the company. It's been one of the most, uh, you know, fulfilling and encouraging things that I've ever done. And I love being around these people and I love getting up thinking, you know, we got, you know, 20,000 people getting up counting on us for a job every day. And, uh, and, and by and large, I'll tell you what, they work their tails off. You know, hotels never shut down. They go 24 hours a day. It is a demanding, uh, hard job. And th these people are, are, are unbelievable. So I want to introduce John Hunter. He's one of our superstars. John uh, actually was, was at the Omni CNN Center, and uh, Bob gave me most of his background, the stuff I was going to say about him. Uh, but he was at the Omni CNN Center in, in Atlanta, which is a 1,060 room hotel that adjoins the World Congress Center. And then uh, after that, he went and he ran the Royal Orleans in New Orleans. He was the general manager there. And he's come here in the last year and a half or so and come to the corporate office. And he is responsible for all those things, including our loyalty program. He's in charge of our spas and our room service. And really, he's over the food and beverage. He's got a huge job. He's one of the senior guys at Omni. And uh, he, he is, on top of that, you, you will not meet a finer individual than John Hunter. And so uh, I want you to welcome him. <laughs> I think you get a little bit of an idea why I consider myself one of the luckiest people in the world to have a role model like Bob Rowling in my life, not only for business reasons, but for everything that he represents outside of our companies and our business world. And I thank you for that, Bob. Thank you very much. Before I get started, I just want to, first of all, Kaylee, I know we said your name, but why don't you stand up for a minute because I also want Carl. Carl, will you stand up for a minute? Carl works in our graphic arts department in the marketing department. I think, did you do this, this picture right here? You worked on this, so I knew you'd find that familiar. But thank you both so much for everything that you do for us every day. I mean, they truly represent who we are as a company. Uh, and just do a fantastic job for us. I'm um, real pleasure to have the opportunity to speak to you tonight. And I don't really know after the welcome that I received coming through the hallways here, how much value I can add to your efforts here. I get a feeling that was a little set up. But great job, fantastic. We're, we're accepting applications, so a lot of qualifications out there. But it's just a real pleasure to have the opportunity to talk to you this evening about the guest experience, about welcoming guests. It's something I have a lot of passion for in our brand, and I think I can provide a unique perspective about it. Not for the obvious reasons that I'm in the hotel business or my hotel career has spanned 20 years, but because the path that God has provided for my family and I that has called us to five cities in 10 years. And at each point of relocation, the journey to find a church home begins. Whether it's been in a small church in Madisonville, Louisiana. Anybody ever been in Madisonville, Louisiana? Oh, wow. I thought I would get away with that one. So you know what it's like to be a Protestant in Louisiana, right? That's a tough one. Or a big city like Atlanta, Georgia. My wife and I have experienced the joy and the relief of feeling welcome in a church. But we've also experienced occasions where no one in the congregation said a word to us, except the person that was designated to do it that Sunday. <laughs> the greeter, right? We all know who that is. Actually, your greeters are fantastic. You'd even greeter, welcome, point, we even have pointers. <laughs> So I'm gonna talk a little bit about our culture. 
And as I talk about some of the cornerstones of our success, I want you to think about how can we translate some of the things that we do every day into creating an engaged experience for a guest that visits the church. Now the first thing I always like to say when I talk about guest engagement or the guest experience is this is not something that just happens because we hired a bunch of nice people. You guys are wonderful, you're very nice people. But that spirit of guest engagement and guest service, it just doesn't happen because we're nice. It has to be a purpose. It has to have goals around it to accomplish it. And even when you state the goal to create a welcoming and engaging atmosphere, it has to be sustainable. And it has to be fostered by a group of people that have all kind of personalities, different senses of humor, and different talent levels to interact with people that they don't know. It takes a group. Now when you have a stated purpose and you have a group that's fostering that purpose to make it sustainable, you have a culture. So I'm going to talk about the guest engagement at Omni Hotels and you know it evolves around our culture. You heard Bob talk a little bit about our culture and I know this about Bob. You know, our performance at Omni Hotels financially and our ability to survive an economic downturn is not what keeps Bob rolling up at night. And I've heard him say this before, so I'm not trying to speak for you. What keeps Bob rolling up at night is our ability to maintain our culture. It's so important to us. Our culture is what makes our purpose sustainable. And it's built on six pillars. You heard Bob talk about the trilogy, that's one of them. But we view our pillars as foundational for, to provide a sense of experience, not only for our guests, but for our associates as well. And it's just as important that they feel that as it is that our guests feel that. And with the, within the six pillars, there are two that speak to our presentations and our perceptions that we're conveying every day to our guests. And that is the moments of service and the power of one. Moments of service is our training tool. It's our practice. You have to practice. It's guidelines that we provide our associates on how to appropriately interact with a guest relevant to the position that they have. Now that's a lot of words, but just in layman's terms, if you arrive at one of our hotels and you go to, the, to check in and you interact with a guest service agent, we have training and guidelines and moments of service for how that guest agent interacts with a guest. If you go to one of our restaurants and experience the art of breakfast, you're gonna have a completely di different interaction with the server, but we have moments of service for that interaction. If you've ever been to a banquet or a catering event in one of our ballrooms or one of our hotels, and you see the culinary associate that's carving the steamship or the prime rib, we actually have a moments of service for that gentleman as well. Because moments of service, because a purpose, a stated purpose of guest engagement requires it to be sustainable. And moments of service is a pillar of our culture that allows us to sustain that. It's our training. And it's important. It's very important. The other pillar that speaks to our guest engagement is the power of one. The power of one is the essence of our service philosophy. It reflects our belief that every guest interaction is an opportunity for an associate to delight a guest. It only takes one, one interaction to make a difference in a guest experience in our hotels. And I would say that translates very significantly into the church. It only takes one person to say hello to you to change your perception about your experience in a church. The Power One has a lot of visibility in our company. Every week we pick one of the 19 points, commitments, to service. And we circulate that throughout our brand. And whether you work in Fort, work in Fort Worth or you're on task force at La Costa, that week the Power One is the same. And we start every day with a meeting called Stand Up. Every department has it. And it's all the stakeholders that are responsible for the success of the day. And we talk about how many arrivals we have and how many departures we have, how many re reservations do we have. 
what's happening in our ballrooms? Are there projects happening in our hotels that are going to impact the guest experience? And we recite the power of one. So it's our recommitment every day, and that's, it takes a commitment about guest experiences to make it sustainable. It takes a group of people who are invested in fostering its success. Now, as you look at the Power of One, and I want to share a few with you, and if we were going to create a Power of One for the church, there are some of these that are very applicable, right? Some of them are very specific to hotels, but if you look at number two, know and satisfy our guest expectations. You know, I feel very comfortable amongst great Christians, so I can let you in on a little secret. When I visit your church, I'm terrified. <laughs> I had a wife and three kids, and they're scared. And am I going to have to sing because I can't sing? Am I going to sit next to somebody? Know that people are intimidated when they visit. If you know, you can, you can disarm that, right? Know and satisfy our guest expectations. Number three, greet our guests immediately with our undivided attention. At Omni Hotels, we have a 10-5 rule. And if I called Kaylee up here, she could tell you what the 10-5 rule is. At 10, at 10 feet, if we come in proximity to a guest or another associate, we're going to make eye contact and smile. If that 10 feet turns to 5 feet, we're actually going to stop and engage you in a salutation. Good evening. How is everything with your stay? Is there something else I can do to assist you? Greet our guests immediately with our undivided attention. Because remember, it only takes one. It takes one interaction to change somebody's perception about what's happening. Smile and make eye contact. There you go. The 10-foot rule. Make the first and last 30 seconds count. Ask our external guests about their stay and invite them back. In my travels, when I visit a church, I know in the first 10 minutes whether I'm coming back. I think I'm probably in the majority of visitors when I make that assumption. So what if we said, let's make the first 10 minutes and the last 10 minutes count. Invite them back. Be natural and appropriately friendly. When I visited and congregations don't speak to you and the only person that speaks to you is the person who's designated to do it, something happens to those people when they take that role. It's like they're working. <laughs> it's just not natural. Always be natural and appropriately friendly. Use our guest name whenever possible. That's very powerful. When you meet someone, our moments of service for a front office associate, we want you to use the guest name at least three times in the first interaction because you're personalizing your interaction. It means a lot. It resonates. Escort guests whenever possible. You know, as intimidated as my wife and I are when we visit a church for the first time, when I take my kids to Sunday school for the first time, I, it's like dragging them in. They're, they're just as scared. And you walk in and, you know, when you visit a church for the first time, Sunday school is pretty hard to find because you don't know the buildings, you don't know where it is. And I'm a guy, I'm not going to ask for directions right away. I'm going to look for directional signs and read billboards and things like that, but, but nobody speaks to you. And you see somebody that passes by and so you say, Jackson is 12 and Jane is 11 and Jillian is 6. And I was wondering where we could get them to Sunday school. And you get the response, it's, it's down the corner on the left, first door. That's an opportunity to escort us. Oh, that's wonderful. We have a great Sunday school program for kids that age. I'll take you right there. Isn't that so much more powerful than the point and take a left? Escort guests whenever possible. Stay up, be energetic, take good care of ourselves. Energy is contagious. Be energetic. If you're energetic, I'm going to be energetic. Remember, I'm scared to death. Energy, it's contagious. Be ambassadors for our hotel and promote it enthusiastically. How about if we were ambassadors for our church and promoted it enthusiastically? Always maintain your smile, even though the guests may not. <laughs> Kaylee, that's an easy one, isn't it? <laughs> and then finally, number 18 is always remember that we were hospitality professionals. And how about let's change that and say, Always remember that we're Christians. 
Because in the Bible, in the book of John, it says hospitality is a godly virtue. Makes me feel very good about what I do every day. 